Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, today in our meditation circle, we are doing the reparenting series, part two, which is remothering or mothering ourselves, maybe not even re, and exploring the divine feminine. And this topic is really near and dear to my heart. So I wanted to share kind of a, not a replay, because this is just going to be me one on one with you, the listener. Um, because our meditation circles are much more focused on community. So that being said, this experience is going to be very different. And if you do want that community feeling and support, I would suggest uh, joining the meditation circles every Sunday. And the link to that is in my bio and I'll link it down below, depending on where you're listening. Um, but because this topic is so important, I wanted to touch on it and, and have it accessible to more than one person or more than the people that join the circle. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So what is remothering? What is the divine feminine? The divine feminine, and let me, before I get into that, let me say that Feminine and masculine, in this case, do not have anything to do with sex or gender. Um, so sex and gender are different from the energetic feminine and energetic masculine that I'll be talking about this week and next week. Everyone does have feminine and masculine energy, no matter their sex or their gender or their gender, gender identity. So just when I say feminine, I don't necessarily mean female. I don't mean vagina. I mean feminine energy, and that's what I'm going to describe right now. So the divine feminine would be the yin part of the yin and yang. And so the yin part is the dark, the dark circle. Um, and you can see that in the yin and yang, there's a white circle or a white half circle, the black circle in it. And in the, the yin part, the darker part, there is a white circle in it. And you've probably seen the yin and yang symbol before, and you may not have known the background. So the dark part is the yin, but it has the masculine space in it because we have to be in balance with our masculine and feminine energies in order to be in complete balance. And so the feminine is held by the masculine and the masculine is inspired by the feminine, which is why those two dots are there. Um, that yin space is also represented by the dark or the new moon, which today, the day I'm recording, which is April 11th, the day of the circle, Today's actually the new moon. Um, so that feels very, very fitting. And I didn't actually plan that, which is really neat. The yin is vulnerable or the divine feminine is vulnerable. Um, it's nourishing, which is why it goes along with mothering. Uh, it's nourishing to ourselves and then to others around us. It's restful. So actually the yin and the divine feminine are attached to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is all about rest and digestion. So when we're resting, when we're taking care of ourselves, when we're being nourishing, that's us being very divinely feminine and mothering ourselves. The yin is very intuitive. And so a lot of the times with the yin and yang, some people will say the yin is what takes in intuition or, or um, receives messages from source, whatever source means to you, God, goddess, universe, um, whatever. And the masculine is what acts on that. The masculine also protects the yin, the feminine, by setting boundaries, by divinely inspired action from the yin. The yin is very creative. And that creativity comes from rest, too. Um, and I must plug the artist's way. Um, I'm also reading Big Magic as well, and that's all about creating from a place of rest. The yin or the divine feminine is a surrender. And that kind of goes with rest at the surrender to higher power, to intuition, really taking in the messages that it's receiving. Divine Feminine is also very compassionate, very loving to both ourselves and the surroundings. That could be the earth, that could be other people, that could be dogs, that could be children. And the Divine Feminine is very sensual. And so the divine feminine is also about reclaiming our own sexuality, our sexual identification, our sexual expression, and our sensuality, which kind of goes hand in hand with pleasure. Um, 
divine feminine is pleasurable. That could be sexual pleasure, it could be self pleasure, but it also could be a massage, rubbing in lotion, taking a beautiful bath, anything that brings you pleasure. It's not necessarily sexual pleasure, but it could be. And divine feminine is all about movement as well. And so I'm not going to be doing this with you all, but in the meditation circle, we did yin yoga, which is a very restful, soft kind of yoga. And that's a great kind of movement. You can also dance. You can do yoga. You can walk, run, any kind of movement, especially intuitive movement that just feels good is often yin. Change the play. So you may be listening because you feel like you have a blocked feminine energy, or you may be in need of mothering yourself. And so the blocked feminine can really look like resistance to connecting with your body, connecting with your intuition, or connecting to source. And source, again, could be God, the goddess, universe, spirit. Um, and sometimes that happens when I sit in meditation, when I just can't get there. There's just the block, there's the resistance. That could be blocked feminine or the need to mother yourself. Control, control. And as someone who's anxious or can be anxious like myself, I can have that need for control. I want to control everything around me. I even want to control others around me when I'm at my unhealthiest. Um, control outcomes, control my own thoughts, control the day, you know, controlling your plan. Um, I was talking to a friend who is buying a house uh, and she wants to very much be in control of the whole process. And part of having that process come to you is letting go of control, right? And so that intense need for control could be a blocked feminine energy. Um, similarly, blocked intuition. So you're not getting, you're not in touch with that intuition in your body. You're not getting intuitive clues. Um, and maybe if you are getting intuition, you're dismissing it right away. And so this could look like anxiety or depression that could block you from your intuition as well. Uh, a lack of creativity. Difficulty expressing the self. So that could be verbally communicating your needs, your desires, your thoughts, your feelings to someone in your in relationship with you or by yourself. You may not be able to identify the feelings and the thoughts that are going on in your body. It could even look like being manipulative. Trying to manipulate that kind of goes along with controlling, trying to manipulate outcomes, manipulate people. The ego, an unhealthy ego, would play a large part in the blocked feminine energy. And so the ego isn't bad, but kind of being ego focused and ego driven um, would not be perhaps ideal. Blocked feminine could look like codependence. So taking care of others instead of taking care of yourself, focusing on the needs of others and dismissing your own needs. Um, picking up on other people's emotions before you pick up on your own, always needing external validation from people that you may be in relationship with. This could also look like an unhealthy relationship to that. Not embracing your own sexual pleasure, your own sexual identity or expression, um, not being in touch with your pleasure, your sensuality. Black feminine can also look like sitting in victimhood, which means that we act like victims. Now, it can also look like a lack of boundaries as well, which kind of goes in hand, hand in hand with um, always prioritizing others. And so how do we connect with the divine feminine? This is up to you. So I'm just going to be giving you some suggestions, but the, it, it's different for everyone, right? Um, and since the divine feminine is so intuitive, um, follow your intuition with what would help you connect to divine feminine. Some examples would be connecting with the moon and noticing the moon phases. Like I said, today is the new moon, which means it's dark. Creating space for your own intuition, checking in, listening, listening to what your body is trying to tell you, what your higher self or your source is trying to tell you. Um, and I did do a meditation on 
connecting to your intuition. And there is going to be a course that starts May 3rd that's free, all about connecting to your intuition. Being creative. And creativity, I talk about this a lot on my podcast, is being creative in always. Creativity is not just, I made a wonderful painting or I made a beautiful sculpture, I'm creative. And it could be that, but it could be making music, listening to music, dancing, um, creating a beautiful altar space, creating a beautiful desk space, creating a, a great morning ritual or a morning routine, cooking a meal that nourishes you, um, being spiritual. Those are all very creative things. Um, dancing. Uh, like I said, the feminine energy is very flowing and dancing is a great way to get in contact with that, especially kind of spiraling dancing. Um, music, listening to music that empowers you, maybe even that's soft and sensual and just feels very flowing. Listening to affirmations or writing out your own affirmations. I think you all know how much I love affirmation pod. Um, I share Josie Ong's work quite a bit, and that can really help kind of fuel your own cup. Self-care practices. So whatever your self-care practices look like, um, they may not look like other people's. They may not be what you may see on Instagram or what's trendy. Self-care can be sleeping enough, drinking enough water, um, maintaining healthy hygiene, um, going on walks, whatever self-care means to you. Um, you might connect with your divine feminine, uh, perhaps goddess work, if that resonates with you. But if it doesn't, that's okay. Uh, and resting, creating time for rest. And so the new moon can actually be a great time for rest as well. Um, so if you are listening to this or watching this in real time, resting would be a great idea for you today. Resting also looks like not working. So at five or six or whatever you're done with work, you're done with work and it's time to rest and refuel. Practicing compassion, particularly with yourself. Um, giving yourself gentleness, grace, not beating yourself up. Similarly, forgiving yourself. And having mothering qualities towards yourself. And so for our check-in, we'll think about what does mothering the self mean to us? So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And nurturing things, nurturing ourselves with self-care, nurturing plants. Plants can be very divine feminine. You know, you have to water them, monitor them, giving love to a plant. Um, getting Nora made me feel very connected to my divine feminine and mothering energy because I care so much for her. Creating a nice altar space. You're, I love my altar space. I like to, I really do nurture it. It looks beautiful. It brings me comfort. You also nurture a space in your house, your house in general, an outside space like a garden. Um, you know, anything that you feel nurturing for it. And being connected in nature. Today I spent my whole morning outside uh, working on this, journaling, reading out in nature, and I feel so grounded. And stop the share. And so for our check-in, let's go ahead and close our eyes. Hmm. Breathing, feeling grounded. I'm going to ask you to think about this question. What does the ideal mother look like to you? So this may look different than your real mother that you had. You maybe didn't have a mother growing up. Um, it could look very similar to your mother. Hmm. Some qualities that come to my mind are unconditional love. Hmm. Acceptance, always accepting what the child says. Being very grounded, very emotionally calm, stable, and present, emotional presence. 
nourishing, safety, support, love. Hmm. What comes up for you? You might want to jot some of those words down. If you need time to really delve into this topic, go ahead and pause the video and come back whenever you're ready. I'm going to share my screen again so I can share some music. Make sure the music is sharing. Bring it up a little bit. So let's settle into a meditation now. And we'll come back to journaling. No worries. Finding a nice comfortable seat. Maybe that's sitting down, lying down. I would invite you to make your spine straight, allowing for that free flow of energy to go from the top of your head, to the base of your spine. Kind of that energetic highway, that energetic. Just noticing your breath now, not trying to change it or manipulate it at this time, just noticing. Being really mindful of what's happening in your body or what's happening on the outside of your body, even. You know, how, is, how do your pants, your skirt, your robe, how does that feel on your skin? How does it feel to be supported? Noticing maybe the cool sensation of breath going in and the almost warmer, hot sensation of the breath coming out on the skin. Adjusting so that you feel comfortable in your body. And finding a sense of safety. When you're not doing this with the life weekly circle, but there is a sense of community that other people are going on this journey with you, that others may be watching or listening to this replay with you. Feeling held by that community, perhaps even held by my voice. Held by your body held by your meditation space or you're sitting or laying down. Knowing that the present moment is always here for you. And when we do this, this internal work, we are going back into the past to see how we feel in the present. And whenever that becomes overwhelming for us, we can always come back to the past where there's safety. Exploring the past is helpful because it releases us to be free in our present and in our future and to connect with ourselves on a deeper level. However, we also don't want to stay stuck. Feeling your body rest, slow down. Letting your thoughts of the upcoming week, the to-do lists, they fade away. Perhaps placing a hand on your heart, feeling what it feels like to have your skin connect to your clothes or to your skin. Feeling held by this action of the hand to the heart. Noticing what it feels like to physically be held by your hand. Notice what it feels like to hold. Now that we know what mothering the divine feminine can look like, we're gonna take this time to explore our unbalanced feminine energy and even our own mother wound.
those who may experience another wound perhaps didn't experience empathy around their emotions when they were a child. They weren't allowed to express negative emotions when they were children. Perhaps their parents were extra critical. Perhaps the mother expected the child to support the mother's physical or emotional needs. And you had to be that support person for the person who was supposed to support you. Perhaps your parent wasn't available to you emotionally, physically. Perhaps your mother experienced their own emotional or physical abuse, didn't process that trauma and kind of passed it on to you. Perhaps the mother had an untreated mental health condition or experienced some kind of addiction. Or perhaps you didn't have a mother figure. You had an absence of a mother figure in your life. Remembering to breathe, noticing the feelings and reactions that come up in your body as you hear these things. Perhaps you didn't feel like you could turn to your mother for comfort or security or safety as a child. Perhaps you had to kind of hustle for your worthiness, always trying to monitor if you had approval. So you may not have had a bad relationship with your mother but you may still have a mother wound. In fact, all of us probably have some layer of a mother wound because no parent is perfect. Meaning that we'll have wounds around our parents in some way. Not only can mothers or a lack of a mother create this wound, it can also come from the patriarchy creating an imbalance of feminine energy. So can internalize capitalism, feeling like we always have to go, go, go in this very masculine way. How does your body feel? What are the emotions that are coming up? Where do you feel them? Maybe you feel them in your chest space, tightening. Are you feeling an elevated heart rate? Maybe you feel it in your throat, feeling a constriction of your throat. In your belly, feeling nauseous, queasy, jittery, butterflies, a tightening or clenching sensation. Wherever you feel it in your body, you just notice that feeling without judgment or trying to change it. Last week, we reflected on the inner child. You may feel your inner child reacting today. Notice those feelings connecting with the breath. If you knew where the emotion is showing up in your body, send the extra breath space. Sending yourself compassion. Perhaps you still have the hand on your heart. You keep it there or move it perhaps to your belly, wherever you're feeling that emotion. Creating space for yourself to have these feelings. Feeling your breath coming into your body, filling you up. And with your exhales, letting go of fear and doubt. Remembering that you're safe in this sacred space held by all the people doing this work across the country, across the world with you. 
This wound can lead to low self-esteem, a lack of emotional awareness. So it may be hard to pinpoint the emotion in your body. Okay. Inability to self-soothe. The feeling that warm and nurturing relationships aren't available to you. How does that resonate with you? What is your body's reaction? Continuing to breathe. Having space for yourself, understanding that this is challenging. Not judging yourself. Continuing to breathe with maybe a hand on your heart or your chest. You may feel the desire to run from these uncomfortable emotions that may be coming up. Not judging that urge because it makes sense, but coming back to those emotions. Um, if you had to name the emotions coming up, how would you describe? Perhaps it might feel like grief. When I do this work, it feels heavy, like lead, which I identify with grief. There could even be a sense of relief to hear this out loud, maybe know that you're not quote unquote crazy. And the release even. Mm, perhaps you feel anger, anger for your inner child or for your past self. Anger even at the systems that we live in that perpetuate disconnection with our feminine selves. Maybe even gratitude. Maybe you had a wonderful mother who felt you don't identify with this at all, and so you may be feeling gratitude. You may be feeling all these things at once, holding space for more than one complex emotion, exercising compassion for yourself, in this moment. Perhaps you feel guilt for having these feelings in the first place. They're often guilted things. But your mom loves you. Your mom tried hard. You only have one mother. You're not allowed to feel angry or abandoned. Noticing that guilt or that shame that may be coming up with these feelings. You may be feeling shame because you feel like that wound, the ways that you were abandoned, is your fault. Or that it reflects on your worthiness. Who you are. Just notice the feelings without trying to change them. Keep breathing, breathing into those feelings that are coming up. Like I said, if there's a resistance to these feelings, you don't feel connected to your body or your emotions. Breathing into a sense of compassion for yourself, knowing that those emotions, those thoughts, those memories will come as time in your body. Giving grace to yourself at this time. And likely you've been running from these feelings because they're unpleasant, right? And while it's uncomfortable to sit with these feelings, there also might be a sense of relief, a sense of surrender to just stop running. It can feel good to be still even if it's painful. But it's also painful to run with something chasing. 
painful, that's challenging. And you do really have to feel it in order to heal it. Or be open to it. And this work is not to blame the mother that you had or didn't have. Although feeling righteous and justified anger may be beneficial for where you are at this time. This work is also not supposed to make you feel like a victim. Although experiencing out the ways in which you felt like a victim is very healthy. And eventually we'll step out of that victimhood into a feeling of Just sitting with yourself and telling yourself, all parts of me are welcome. And slowly coming out whenever you're ready. Stop wiggling the toes or the fingers. Connecting with the clothes on your body, chair maybe on the floor. Coming back into the here and And so I'd like to invite you to journal at this time. And I'll ask you to pause the video and then press play whenever you're ready. And so journal about what is the ideal mother. So right, you asked yourself this at the very beginning. Time to expand on that. How does this ideal mother differ from the one that you grew up with or didn't have? Just journal about what came up for you around the mother wound. Go ahead and pause the video and come back. Whenever you're ready, coming back to meditation. Coming back to meditation, breathing, really grounding, reflecting on what you just journaled about, thinking about the ideal mother. Hmm. Were there any parts of what you journaled that surprised you? And in this next meditation, we're going to focus on embodying that ideal mother. We'll be coming to these feelings now as our mothers, our own mothers. We may give her a visualization or an embodiment. It could look like an older version of you like an animal, like an ancestor. I find it helpful to not make it my own mother, because that's why I'm doing this work. But perhaps where it does look like your own mother, it could look like a ball of light, look like a space, a beautiful nature space. It's like a feeling. Mm. It can feel like a connection to your source, to your higher power, to your higher self, to your intuition. And when we are balanced in our yin and our yang, our feminine, our masculine, the concept of mothering ourselves comes easily to us, or more easily than not. Being our own mother means loving ourselves, nourishing ourselves, giving ourselves affirmations, giving ourselves. Meaning to breathe, noticing how that resonates with you to hear that out loud. Mm. Reflect on what you said about your ideal mother. 
breathing into the emotions in the body, feeling held and supported by your body. Being your own mother comes with unconditional love for yourself, with holding space for yourself, witnessing emotions without trying to change them, without judging them. This might be helpful to imagine your inner child feeling sad, angry, unheard, abandoned, feeling like what it would feel like to give them a hug, give yourself a hug. When you have a bad day at work, would a mother brush you off and not listen to you when you're feeling emotional, when you're feeling upset? Would the ideal mother let you cry without being to stop your tears? Would a mother make sure you drink all your water, eat in a healthy way that blesses your body? How does the ideal mother care for her child? And that's why you'll care for yourself. Remembering to breathe into the feelings that come into your body. Allowing yourself to feel pain if that's what comes up for you. To feel grief. Feel heavy angry. Breathing into the subliminal space of being your own inner child and your own mother, being your own higher self and your own lower self, of feeling and of releasing, embracing this duality because not everything Hold space for the body's reaction, emotion. Notice the thoughts that come into your head without judgment or analyzing them. Allowing yourself to be all parts of you are welcome. Continuing to breathe. Mothering yourself means giving those ideal mothering qualities back to yourself. Caring for yourself. What would it look like to care for yourself? Checking with the breath. The mother wound can even look like emotional caretaking for those around you. Perhaps not taking care of yourself. And if this resonates with you, what would it look like to reclaim all that energy you give away and focus it on yourself? on caring for yourself. I'm going to say some affirmations and pause so that you can keep them back to yourself, either out loud or in your own mind. Remembering to breathe with each affirmation, perhaps on the exhale, really letting some My heart is open to giving and receiving overflowing amounts of love.
the sacred energy within me is flourishing and driving me forward. I am aligned with the compassionate and understanding energy that is divine. Noticing how each affirmation resonates in your body. I take care of my own needs, but for others. Mm. I value self-care. I value my own creativity. All parts of myself and my emotions are welcome. That's placing a hand on your heart. My intuition is welcome. I surrender to the flow and release control. My sensuality and sexual expression, welcome. My needs are valid. Taking a big inhale. And on the exhale, let something go. One more like that. Noticing how you feel. When you're ready, grounding and coming back to your body. When you're ready, grab your journal and journal about how you will create space for mothering yourself and for the divine feminine energy that we spoke about. If you're doing this in real time, today is the new moon be a great time for setting intention. So if this resonates with you, perhaps you also set some intention how you'll care for yourself. I'm gonna pause this video and come back to it. Mm, so if you were going to be in the live circle, we would have done a grounding gratitude and worthiness meditation from Ellen Gilbert. You can see that's embedded in the slides. So in the circles, we also do a guided meditation from someone that's happy. Mm. Wherever you're watching this, there will be the option to comment. If you're perhaps listening on the Facebook or the, sorry, the podcast version, feel free to join a community and share what came up for you. There's more content on my Instagram at empowered.spirituality. There's more guided meditations via Empowered Spirituality by Samantha Nagel, wherever you listen to your podcast. I do accept donations, but they're not required. I'm gonna leave you with some extra resources. I already mentioned Ellen, Ellen, Ellen Gilbert. She has a divine feminine coach, meaning that she is very skilled in this area. I recommend checking her out. I recommend checking out Bethany Webster. She has a book called Discovering the Inner Mother, but she also does a lot of podcast interviews, videos, blog posts. She has a lot of great stuff on her website, bethanywebster.com. Of course, I also mentioned my own podcast, which is the Empowered Spirituality Podcast with myself. I do interviews with women who have gone through similar things. You can share. I interview professionals. Hmm. You can also see guided meditations. You can even see the reparenting series. So I do an adaptation of these circles for the podcast. 
And I would really recommend the book, Women Who Run With Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Hunt. And that can be beneficial for everyone, not just women. Mm. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this next week, the weekly life circle will be divine masculine and fathering ourselves in the father wound, which will be really exciting. Um, in the circles, you'll have a chance to share, you'll have a chance to connect with others and just feel really held in community. So I do recommend joining the circle. Until next time, I'll see you later. Namaste.